face of the earth that can solve my problem for me but myself. I am doing this but to myself. No matter how tempted I am to believe that there is something out there that is causing this to happen to me, let me let go and see that I am the cause of this. Because if I am the cause of this, then I can be the solution. And if I am not the cause of this, I'm in a lot of problems. I'm going to have to attempt to sacrifice to something outside of me, to arbitrate, to go through quid pro quo, to demand reciprocity in association with idolatry thought forms that I've constructed outside of myself to mitigate the impossible problem in which I find myself. I'm flowing a little bit here. I, I want you to try to get a hold of what this, the impossibleness of this. Now, that's lesson 79 of the Course. Isn't that lovely? Then lesson 80 is let, the, let me recognize the problem has been solved. Wow, that's nice. We won't do that one, though, because that's not on our list. But that's, that's coming along. <laughs> you go to bed, you be real good, and tomorrow we'll do lesson. No, we, we must do two more lessons here. This lesson, I'm anxious to see what this one is. I think it's a good one. <laughs> oh wow. Is it is this lovely? This is lesson this is lesson one fifty eight. Today I learned to give as I receive. Sometimes the titles to the workbook lessons won't particularly pertain to, to the workbook as you may have discovered. Never mind your perceptual. Listen to what this lesson says because this is, uh, sure enough, this is what we've been talking about this morning. Okay. It's going to tell you that this is the time that you chose. But you didn't know you chose this time until you chose it. And when you chose it, it had always been chosen. Do you know that's what this lesson says? I'm going to tell you that way when I read it, you'll hear it a little better. Okay. The time has already been set, but you don't know it's been set until you choose to set it, and then it's always been set. Everybody got that? Yeah. All right. Why? Because it's already all over. And you say, well, I'm changing it. And I say, no, you're not. You're just a fa it's all in the fabric anyway. Okay? Isn't that fun? <laughs> now, you have total free will to do what's already been done. And you say, well, that's not free will. And I say, oh, yes, it is. Isn't that funny? Now you're caught between your determinism, and this is a great theological discussion. You're caught between your absolute predestination, which is your Presbyterian determinism, which everything has already happened, confronted by your determination to be what? To be free and assert yourself. Okay? Now I'm going to give you total freedom by the acknowledgement that everything has already been determined, but perceptual mind doesn't like that very well. It's going to attempt to do something within the linear condition of time that it hasn't already done, but it's impossible that it do that. Okay? Feel good about that, not bad, though. You're tempted to attempt to do something that's never been thought of before. This is Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. It's a play, if you ever want to read it. Rosencrantz determined he's going to do something that has never been done before, but obviously he can't. He's going to try not to meditate. He's going to try not to... Uh, motivate anything. He's going to have a thought that's never been thought of. Okay? The quantum physicists are trying to do that. They're trying to set up experiments in what you call wave-particle association and then pretend that they didn't set up the experiment. <laughs> that way they can step back from the experiment and observe the, the, uh, the electronic associations of the wave particle. But they, ca they can't do it. They're caught in their own subjectivity. What they discover is that they're influencing the experiment with their mind, which is, of course, what they're doing. Since the experiment is only contained in the retrospect of their previous uh, dramatic demonstrations of experiential unreality. You got that? Good, because I don't have any idea what that is. <laughs> But it sounds good. <laughs> All right. No, it's, it's an amazing thing. It's always like, will it be there if I don't look at it? Was it always there? And all these sort of things that go on in your mind. Here we go. First of all, what's been given you? 
The knowledge that you are a mind, in mind, purely mind, sinless forever, wholly unafraid because you were created out of love. Listen. Nor have you left your source remaining as you were created. Now, listen carefully to this. This was given you as knowledge which you cannot lose. It was given as well to every living thing. Why? For by that knowledge only does it live. This is the statement that beingness is singular. That this I am that you're expressing is singular. That everything is only its own beingness. Try to get a hold of this. That's what this says. That's what creating is. You are as much God as you are God's Son in the sense of your own being wholeness. Okay? That cannot be. You can't lose that. That's what you are. Now, what's happened? You have received all of this. Why? No one who walks the world but has received it. It is not this knowledge which you give, for that is what creation gives. And all of this cannot be learned. Actually, this is the, what, what we would call in space-time the ontological admission that all of us come from a common source, that we have a dharma, that we have a spirit of absolute reality that is singular in us, isn't it? Okay, that's not the knowledge you're going to offer. The knowledge you're going to offer is your limited perceptual association coming to that determination. Listen to this. All of this cannot be learned. You can't learn that. That's what you are. What then are you to learn to give today? Our lesson yesterday evoked a theme found early in the text. The theme found early in the text was, Into his presence would I enter now. This is the statement of the transformation of the body that you're undergoing now. That was the lesson just before this. All right, now listen. All this cannot be learned. Our, our lesson yesterday evoked a theme found early in the text. Experience cannot be shared directly in the way that vision can. Okay? The revelation that the Father and the Son are one will comes in time to every mind. Listen. Yet is that time determined by the mind itself, not taught. You can't teach your limited associations what you are. You determined within your own total idea about yourself, contained within the fabric of your reality, when that time was. You can't teach that. Why? It's already happened and you're gone from here. You're teaching only in the limited associations of your perceptual observations of yourself in order to forgive the previous grievances or what you call sequential time associations that keep you from seeing that you're actually whole. That's the relinquishment of your own self, isn't it? Now listen. Yet is that time determined by the mind itself, not taught. Now, the time is already set. It appears to be quite arbitrary. You're going along, you're going along. And why? You never can judge where you are in relationship with yourself. Don't you see? You cannot perceptually be the determiner of your own revelation. You think you can, and you keep trying to identify yourself in association with it, and that's what holds you in your space-time association, doesn't it? Your need to have the thought rather than be the thought. Your need to, to have the emotion rather than be the emotion. The need to justify in your thought forms the anger rather than being the anger, rather than being the love, rather than being whole unto yourself. It appears to be quite arbitrary, yet there is no step along the road that anyone takes but by chance. It's impossible. It has already been taken by him although he has not yet embarked on it. It's already been taken by him, although he has not yet embarked on it. Because each moment that he embarks on it, it's already been taken. Why? Cause and effect are not apart. As soon as he apparently has the problem, the solution was always there. This is what I tried to say to you at the beginning of this lesson. Do you see? Each time you, you think the problem isn't solved, it's really solved. This is what's happened to you now. 
You've accumulated a lot of solutions that didn't work. You've rejected those from your mind, and you're just coming into a moment's whole association with yourself. Was this the time that you decided to wake up and become whole, remembering you're in heaven? Yeah. Well, won't it, can't it be? This says it can be some other time. No, it doesn't. No, no, it says it can only be this time. This time appears to be arbitrary to you because until the moment that you come into the wholeness of your own atonement and undergo the experience, you can't know that that was the time that you did it. You'll always be caught in this attempt to find it in your limited form associations. This will come to you. Let it sink in a little bit. You'll get it. Ready? It has already been taken by you, although he has not yet embarked on a journey. Ready? Lovely. For time but seems to go in one direction. We but undertake a journey that is over, yet it seems to have a future still unknown to us. Not possible. Okay. Any time you justify your present condition based on previous experience, you have literally created the previous experience that did not exist until you justified it in the effect of you. Anybody hear this? You call that preventive maintenance. An accident never happens until it happens. When it happens, you justify it by the previous associations. Isn't that astonishing? Everybody hear this? If you're flying in an airplane and you're flying in an airplane and suddenly it blows up, all right, they look back to the past association to determine what caused the accident. They discover it was bad maintenance, but the maintenance was okay until the plane blew up. Can you hear that? Yeah. There has to be a reason for everything happening, but until it happens, it's terrible, isn't it? You must justify by looking in, and you literally create a past association to justify your present condition. That's an astonishing thing to do. Isn't that amazing? You had to make the engine defective because the accident occurred. Otherwise, the engine was perfect. What made the engine defective? The crash. Uh. Actually, they're both going on at the same time, but that's hard for you to see. Really, what's happening is every time you think of crash, you're crashing. What you've really done is create a, st a statistical possibility Within a, with a framework of linear time, if you create a statistical possibility, it has to come about. There's no such thing as statistic. Everything happens by the thought of it. Can you hear this at all? A million to one chance is exactly the same as a one to one chance, because until it happens, it's not. When it happens, it becomes a one to one. Well, there was no chance that that could have happened. I don't know. One single little bolt had to come loose and then and on and on and on. It never stopped. Yet it did happen. Why? Because there was a thought that it could happen. And if there's a thought that it can happen, it will. All prophecies are self-fulfilling. That's why you need to die. You contain with you the elements of the certainty of your death. How are you going to keep from dying until you change your mind? You can't. You'll just keep on dying. All right? Yet it seems to have a future still unknown to us. Ready? Time is a trick a sleight of hand, a vast illusion in which figures come and go as if by magic. They're coming all around you. Yet there is a plan behind appearances that does not change. The script is written. When experience will come to end your doubting has been set. Notice it says experience. Notice that it says that the doubting you have about yourself cannot be overcome except by the experience that you're undergoing now. And if you think it can, you're going to be around here a long time because you are the doubter. And the doubter cannot be real. What is it that he doubts? This is lesson 139, my favorite lesson in the course. He doubts himself, but what is it that he's doubting? It can't, the doubter can't be any more real than what he doubts, really. That's why you have to undergo this experience in order to be real. The script is written. When experience will come to end, your doubting has been set. For we but see the journey from the point at which it ended, looking back on it, imagining we make it once again, reviewing mentally what has gone before. This must be true. 
Why? Because the atonement or the repair or the apparent schism occurred at the moment that it happened. It was shoo shoo. All right? Now, you're actually looking from the creative essence of yourself back into the occurrence. Here's a problem you have with that. Since you think that your identity is emanating from the bottom of the schism, let's try this for you, just see if you can get this, this will help you, from what you would call the black hole, from, from what you would call uh, potentiality, the idea of the activation of the thought form, the earth, the moon, the female, Mother Earth. We all came from Mother Earth. I can see the evolutionary process evolving. My identity is to activate as I evolve from this source. Ah, but here's the hooker. Your source is not here. Your source is here. Remember what we said. Shoo, shoo. Okay. This is, this is why there's no gender in the cars. I've, I should cover this for you guys that think you ought to be sisters. I don't know what the hell that means, sisters or female, okay? There is no such thing as female because female is potential and is activated by the force of reality. It becomes whole automatically. This has nothing to do with female and male as you engender it, okay? But as Jesus would say, there's no such thing as potential. That creates what? Time. 